Hi, I'm Dr. Ken Berry, family physician, and in this short video, I want to discuss with you the question, can a specific diet boost or improve your immune system? We all want a strong, intelligent immune system. Is it possible that there are certain diets out there that can make it better or worse? Actually, yeah, there are, and there's tons of meaningful research to back this up. This video is going to explain what the research says and how you should adjust your diet to boost your immune system, your immune response to infections, any infection, whether it's bacterial or viral. If you know someone who's worried about their immune system or infections in their community, please consider sharing this video with them. You can share it on your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter, wherever you want to share it that you think it'll do the most good and help the most people. Now, the part of your immune system that deals with infections that your body has never been ex exposed to before, so infections that your body's never seen, is called the innate immune system. Hyperglycemia has negative effects on each different step of your immune system's ability to fight off infections. So hyperglycemia is high blood sugar. And you may think, well, you're talking about chronically high blood sugar that a type two diabetic or a type one diabetic might have. But no, actually most of this research that I'm gonna talk about was done on transient acute blood sugar spikes, like after you eat a high carbohydrate meal. So this is actually very important for you on a meal to meal basis. You may have heard of a friend who was scheduled for surgery and the surgeon said, yeah, we're gonna to have to postpone your procedure because your blood sugar is just too high. Why would a surgeon do that? That cuts down on their income. I mean, there's gotta be a good medical reason, right? And there absolutely is because anytime your blood sugar is elevated, it increases your risk of bacterial infections, of viral infections, of keeping an infection longer, of not healing properly, of passing that infection on to other people, and of dying from that infection. So absolutely, if your surgeon detects that you have high blood sugar, even more than a little bit, they're probably going to postpone your surgery, and rightfully so, until you get your blood sugar under control. Now, when you're talking about the different machinery of the human immune system, it gets very complicated very quickly. I'm gonna to try to summarize the effects that even a temporary slight increase in blood sugar can have on your body's ability to fight infection. And I'm gonna to link to all the research down below so that you can verify this for yourself. And then I'm gonna tell you about a diet that does not spike your blood sugar, even for a little bit thus protecting you from all the dangers of high blood sugar when it comes to your immune system. Now, the studies that I'm gonna be talking about are actually done in humans. There are also some that were done on animals and some done in vitro in uh, the Petri dish. So we're gonna talk about all those. Now, let's talk about first the effects of high blood sugar on your neutrophils. And neutrophils are crucial for your immune response they act as phagocytes, which means they basically engulf bacteria or they engulf your cells that are infected with viruses. So they're very, very important. And they're, they're one of the most important parts of your innate immune response. So here's what happens to neutrophils when your blood sugar spikes because of a meal that you've just eaten. High blood sugar attenuates the inflammation-induced neutrophil activation. So they just don't activate. Acute high blood sugar decreases your neutrophils chemotaxis, phagocytosis, and bactericidal capacity. So the capacity to put off the chemicals it needs to, to engulf the offending infector, and to kill a bacteria or a virus, your, your phagocytes, your neutrophils just can't do that if your blood sugar is high. High blood sugar uh, impairs your neutrophils of respiratory burst capacity. And this is a specific tactic neutrophils use in your respiratory system, in your lungs, in your bronchial tubes, in your throat, in your oral pharynx to fight infection. High blood sugar acutely reduces superoxide production from activated neutrophils. High blood sugar decreases neutrophils phagocytosis, their ability to engulf the enemy and get rid of it. High blood sugar reduces extracellular trap form formation, which is a very sexy thing that neutrophils do. 
Now let's talk about high blood sugar's effects on endothelial function. Now what's endothelium? That's actually the tiny cells that line your blood vessels and your lymph vessels. They play an integral part in your innate immune system. If these things aren't functioning right, then the neutrophils can't get to where they need to be to fight the infection. High blood sugar reduces endothelium-dependent vasodilation. High blood sugar inhibits endothelial-dependent nitric oxide-induced vasodilation. High blood sugar impairs endothelium-dependent relaxation caused by protein kinase C. High blood sugar induces general epithelial dysfunction across the board. High blood sugar diminishes nitric oxide synthase expression and increases glycation end products, which inhibit endothelial dilation. High blood glucose induces oxidative stress and upregulation of cyclooxygenase, resulting in reduced nitric oxide availability. And high blood sugar leads to rapid increase in endothelial cell permeability. All of these things making it harder for your endothelial cells to do what they're supposed to do as part of your innate immune system to fight off bacterial infections and viral infections. Now let's talk about high blood sugar's effects on your complement system. The complement system is the part of the immune system that enhances the ability of antibodies and phagocytic cells to clear microbes and damage cells from your, your body, promote inflammation and attack pathogens. So that's what the complement system does in a nutshell. It's obviously much more complicated than that, but that's a good nutshell look. High blood sugar induces chronic inflammation and fibrosis. We, this is listed in multiple studies as an effect of even transient, temporary high blood sugar readings. High blood sugar inhibits complement receptor phagocytosis. This is a different kind of phagocytosis that, than the neutrophils normally do. High blood sugar inhibits the attachment of C3 protein to microbial surfaces and impairs opsonization, which is the marking of infected cells for destruction. So your body can't even mark the offending bacterial cell or the, the cell of yours that's been infected with the virus, your body can't even mark that or opsonize it because of high blood sugar. High blood sugar leads to significant reduction in complement fixation by immunoglobulin. Therefore, based on the numerous studies I've published below and the numerous other studies that are listed in the citations of the studies I published, there's clear, obvious, copious amounts of evidence that a diet that causes blood sugar spikes in you is, or chronically high blood sugar readings is going to impair and muck up each step of your innate immune system's ability to fight off both bacterial and viral infections. Therefore, if you eat a diet that does not lead to any blood sugar spikes or chronically high blood sugar levels, you are absolutely optimizing your immune system's ability to not only detect infection early, but to detect in infection properly, to fight that infection vigorously and ultimately to win. There absolutely is a diet like this that you can enjoy that's full of delicious foods that will not spike your blood sugar and therefore will optimize your immune system's ability to protect you. It's actually a spectrum of foods that I call the proper human diet. It ranges from an ovo-lacto-pescatarian low-carb diet all the way up to a carnivore diet full of fatty red meat and eggs and butter. All these diets will protect you from the blood sugar spikes that cripple your immune system's ability to fight off viruses and bacteria. I've seen this diet return people's blood sugar levels completely back to normal. People who were pre-diabetic, who had type 2 diabetes, even people with type 1 diabetes, when they eat one of these diets, they can have normal blood sugar readings, which makes all of their cells function optimally, including the cells in their innate immune system. Now, I don't want you to believe me, I want you to buy a glucometer or borrow one from your mom or your uncle and check your blood sugar. You don't need a prescription to get a glucometer. You can get one online, I'll put a link down below. 
and I want you to eat a meal that you think is a good, healthy meal. It can be a vegan meal. It can be a recipe you prepared off the American Diabetes Association website, or it can be a keto meal from the proper human diet spectrum. And then I want you to check your blood sugar 30 minutes, 60 minutes, and 90 minutes after you eat that meal. If that meal spikes your blood sugar, then there are too many carbohydrates in that meal to be healthy for you and for your immune system. Now, don't worry about the expense of doing this because you won't have to do this very many times before you have figured out a list of foods that absolutely spike your blood sugar and weaken your immune system. And then you can safely and intelligently avoid that list of foods or pseudo foods because I really believe that any food that spikes your blood sugar is probably not a real human food. So if you're worried about infections that you may have heard about in the, in the news, then you absolutely have to take charge of your blood sugar. That is the most important thing that every surgeon worries about. Every immunologist, they all worry about, is your blood sugar high? Is your blood sugar spiking? Because this cripples your immune system. Now, I expect to get lots of flack from the gurus and the pundits out there who believe that eating lots of bananas and big fat green grapes are really good and healthy for you. So I've listed tons of research down in the show notes below. I want you to look this up. If you don't know a word, use your internet search engine to look it up. You're just as smart as the average nutrition guru who may comment on this video. If you enjoyed this video and perhaps learned a thing or two, please consider clicking the subscribe button and the little bell button right beside it so that every time I have a bright idea like this, you'll get a YouTube notification and you can be one of the very first to enjoy it. If my videos have helped your health in some small way, then please consider clicking on my Patreon link. It's down below in the show notes. It's a very quick sign up and you can throw a buck or two my way so that I have more time and more resources to make videos just like this one. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.